broadcasting in Korea, teaching English. Her father was a, in the US Army as a doctor, and that was her kickoff. She later came to George, Georgetown University after growing up in San Antonio and joined NBC News, 12 years there, lots of different spots, Today Show, anchoring on MSNBC. And then in 2011, she came to CBS and was named a co-anchor of CBS This Morning. In 2019, uh, she was named anchor of the CBS Evening News, and that leads to our first question. This is a friendly Washington crowd, but you, you shook up the, uh, the rarefied heights of the Manhattan Towers of the executives in network news by moving the Evening News to Washington. Why did you do Yeah, not, that's worth it. That's worth a little applause. Why did you do that, and what have you found out since you did it? Well, thank you, Shelby, and thank you, Keystone, and thanks to everybody for being here. And as my friend Jim Nance from CBS Sports would say, hello, friends. Um, <laughs> and that's part of the reason that we wanted to bring the CBS Evening News back to the nation's capital, uh, is because we believe that so many important decisions are made here. Uh, as Shelby mentioned, I'm a political journalist by training. I've covered Congress, the Pentagon, the White House. I have traveled around the world with presidents and secretaries of defense and secretary of state. And so to bring the evening news broadcast here put us at the seat of power and where I could do the most reporting, where I could help explain some of the most complex policy decisions and how they affect real people in their lives. So one of the things that is a little bit overlooked, but I have worked on evening news uh, products, is that, and I, I say it uh, carefully, each of them is an amazingly well curated 30 minutes uh, of synthesis of the mood of the nation, the major events in the world. Uh, how, how do you put this together? Take us behind the scenes a little bit about what you see as the major emerging issues and how you highlight those at this point. Well, I think they start first and foremost, I have to say, uh, with values and the tradition of the CBS Evening News. As many of you may know, Walter Cronkite uh, anchored the CBS Evening News for 20 years, was known as the most trusted man in America. And when I took over this role, there was something that he said um, that I said, this is going to be part of the values of our team. And that is that journalism is what we need to make democracy work. We need an informed electorate. If you are a viewer, if you are a voter and say, I can't make sense of this policy issue. I need to know the truth. Who can I trust to understand these complex issues or what's being said? Who will fact check this in a way that I can believe in? That's the CBS Evening News. Our broadcast has a team of lawyers, standards, fact checkers every night that look through what we do. As Shelby mentioned, this is highly curated journalism that is expensive to do. It takes hours to do these pieces of journalism, as many of you watch in-depth reports about complex issues. We did child care uh, this week. We do military issues. Um, we talk about the future of AI almost weekly on our program. It takes a lot of reporting. And so we approach the broadcast every night with what's one thing I say to each of the reporters that works the evening news, tell me something I don't know. You should sit down at 6.30 and watch the CBS Evening News as um, well-read, smart, brilliant people and say, I didn't know that. Huh, that's really interesting. Wow, they're using AI now for breast cancer research. You know, all the, one of the stories that we did last night. So that's how I approach the news. Um, and we start early in the morning, and then we decide up until 6.20 what's going to be the lead of the broadcast. That, by the way, was the most surprising thing to me coming from print background, that the, the pieces that were going to run at the end of the 6.30 news were not finished and out of the editing room before the show started. Oh. Still, I still well, tremble. Not uh, at the CBS Evening News. We finished the end pieces before uh, because, yeah. <laughs> but I know that's different. But that's because 
our show, we, we call it Hard News with Heart, and usually our, we end our show with a piece that's about kindness. We're going we're gonna to get to that later, that. but all right, I, <laughs> I hear you, but I, that sets off the investigative reporter in me. I now want to call up and check with some of the guys in the cutting room. See, yes. Is this all true? Yes. Now, let me ask uh, a, another part of your uh, amazing career is that you are also a correspondent for 60 Minutes, and that also uh, sometimes is bleeds over into the evening news. So you went out to the Pacific to see the, the Pacific fleet, the confrontation with China, some very good uh, pieces out of that on both 60 Minutes and the evening news. What is your sense of how tense things are in, Ch in the US-Chinese face-off at this point? Very. Our top, our top national security officials have said that China is the pacing threat uh, for the United States. That was a conversation that was begun in the second term of the Obama administration, but has been clarified even further in the Biden administration. Uh, you have heard, uh, that is our intelligence assessment, uh, that Xi Jinping has informed uh, the... the uh, Politburo. Yeah, well, yes, the Paul Bureau, the um, PRC, to be ready to invade Taiwan by 2027. So as part of this, looking at this, we looked at 60 Minutes and we said, all right, what's at the center of this? It's the U.S. Navy, right? The U.S. Navy defended us and helped us win World War II. It was at the heart of uh, the Cold War. Well, the past 20 years, we've been fighting land wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. Guess what's happened to the U.S. Navy? We now have less ships than China. China now has the largest navy in the world, and yet the world's economy floats on the ocean, more than half of it in the Pacific. So we went out to one of our great aircraft carriers, the oldest one, the USS Nimitz. Who's been on an aircraft carrier? I mean, I just got the goosebumps even talking about it. I have been everywhere in the world. This was my first time, and I'm a military brat, landing on an aircraft carrier. But bottom line, what we learned in this story is that we are sailing in international waters, but we are facing an increasingly aggressive China, not only in the waters, as they did just this week, in the air against our US Navy pilots. And we are trying to keep the peace there. It was a two-part series on 60 Minutes. It's going to rerun again in July. But I hope you'll watch it, because we interviewed the commander of the Pacific Fleet, Admiral Preparo, who is Iceman from Top Gun. He is. He went to Top Gun School, and now he's the head of the Pacific Fleet. So he's in our piece, and we interview a lot of pilots. But it'll be eye-opening to you um, in terms of what we learned about the threat from China. It was excellent. And I think uh, the, the military concentration, because I see a lot of stories, including last night's heartwarming story about a, a military man who had flown 30 hours to get home to his daughter's high school graduation. But you've also looked at some of the uncomfortable things for the military, including a groundbreaking award-winning series on uh, sexual harassment at the Air Force Academy. And that has had aftermaths. You've kept on that. Tell us a little bit about how you came to that, what you found out, and what the aftermath has been. I'm from a military family. My dad was drafted um, during the Vietnam War, stayed in the Army for 30 years. I have a sister who is a surgeon at Walter Reed. And so uh, I feel very strongly about a strong military, and I feel very strongly about having more women serve in our branches and in national security positions. In 2017, we began to expose what's happening at our service academies. You know, I'm sure you know about our service academies. Not only do you have to be at the top of your class academically, you have to be an incredible athlete. So we found out that there was a lot of sexual assault and harassment happening at the military academies. We did not give up on that story. We have been reporting about abuse by active um, enlisted and officers in the military. And just this year, as many of you know, one of the first items of business by the Biden administration and Secretary of Defense Austin was to reform um, the military adjudication process. And that is new so that men and women who have faced harassment and assault will be able to um, 
adjudicated in a different way that may end this scourge of assault and harassment. So the people, we want the best and the brightest in our military, don't we? We do not want them run out of the military by people who are abusers and harassers. And I think ultimately that makes America stronger in the long run. So thank you for acknowledging that. It has been some of the most meaningful work of my career. It's some of the best that journalism does, is to shine light in dark places. It's often painful and difficult, but when it's brought to light, reforms can happen. So we're almost out of time, but I wanted to uh, ask just about that last story uh, that you have almost every night. There is a heartwarming story, a touching story. You have a fellow named Steve Hartman who often does it from on the road. And this is also going to have a heartwarming ending because Nora, as some of you may know, has three children. This is uh, uh, the season for the end of the year. She's got to rush off and be a little bit late for banquets there, but she came, made time to come and be with us. Tell us why you like those heartwarming stories at the end. Well, I think many of you who watch the news will probably say it's all a lot of bad news all the time, right? And there has been some tough stories that we have had to cover, uh, most notably, obviously, with gun violence. It's almost a story now that we have to cover every single night. But a lot of the programming at the CBS Evening News is solution-based. Each of the stories we do, which I mentioned, child care, uh, women's health care, uh, uh, military issues. We talk about what's the solution. It's not just laying out the problem. We put forward what is the potential solution that lawmakers can address, that community leaders can address, to see, learn something out of these pieces. And then at the end of the broadcast, we do this hard news with heart. So there's an uplifting piece, and it's usually about people in their community who have changed things for the better. It's about the dad soldier who flew back 30 hours to attend his daughter's graduation. It's about an organization that looked at military families, particularly enlisted members, who had to spend hours to get free food because they weren't making enough money. And then our viewers donated hundreds of thousands of dollars to this organization that has helped military families. So we do try and end on a high note on the CBS Evening News. And so send us your stories. We're always looking for those incredible people in your community who are really making a difference, changing America for the better. And that's very much in the Keystone spirit. Thank you so much for coming to be here. Oh, thank you. We'll get you a award. Thank you, Shelby.